Okay, I'm back, and so now we want to do the Unit 4 review uh, for our lecture exam for uh, lesson number 20 on measuring the universe. All right, now this time it's going to be a little bit different because you are not going to have to know all of these different ways of measuring distances in the universe. Now the one that you absolutely positively have to know for the exam is Hubble's Law. So you're going to actually do a calculation mathematically using Hubble's Law. So that's definitely going to be on the exam. Okay, in addition to that, you are going, there's going to be one additional question that is either going to be about spectroscopic parallax Cepheid variables, Tully-Fisher relationships, or standard candles. So there's going to be one more question on the exam. Well, let's say two. So two more questions that are going to deal with those topics, and they're going to be bonus. All right. So if you want to study spectroscopic parallax, Cepheid variable stars. Tully Fisher relationship and standard candles, then that means that you will be ready to answer those two questions on the lecture four exam, which are going to be bonus questions. All right. Uh, and then uh, also we're going to talk about why is Hubble's constant so important. So this is going to be still chapters 15 and 16 from your textbook. Uh, so this is just a repeat of the various distances in the uh, universe. And then uh, the question is, how do we know all of these different distances? And so that's the purpose of this uh, lesson, is just to show you how these distances were measured. Okay, this first one is uh, using the speed of light in order to bounce a radio wave off of, a, of an object, and then we time how long does it take to get back, and then based on that time, then we plug it into that formula, and then we can uh, solve it for the distance to that object. All right, so that's not going to be on the exam. Okay, then this one is the uh, stellar parallax formula, which you already learned uh, in a previous um, unit. So this is not going to be on the exam. It is, however, going to be on the final. So you might as well look at it now, but it's going to be on the final, but not going to be on this particular exam. And so here is an example of how to use that formula. Okay, but then we talked about spectroscopic parallax. And so from uh, just by the definition of this technique, we're going to need to know a spectrum. And so if you take a diffraction grating and you put it on your telescope, you get the spectrum of light produced by a star. So you're going to get its black body curve. So this is a black body curve and then you're going to look at it uh, using your diffraction grating and you're going to find whatever uh, color in the spectrum is the brightest and so that's going to be lambda maximum and then once you've got that you can find the temperature of the star. Uh, by using Venn's law. Okay, then you can also measure the apparent brightness of the star by using photometry. So using a photometer on your telescope. So you'll have the apparent brightness F and you'll have the temperature of the star. So then you can look it up on a HR diagram. So the HR diagram was the one that had the temperature going sideways and then the colors going sideways and then going up and down was the, the brightness. 
so that we could find the temperature and we could bounce it off the main sequence and now we've got the luminosity. So if we've got the luminosity and if we've got the apparent brightness, we plug that into the photometry equation and now we can solve it for the letter R. So now we can measure the distance to this star. So that's the idea of it. And so here's a sample question that would show you how to do it. Now, that's not going to be on the exam. So what would be on the exam is um, more of a conceptual uh, question where you would, tell, you would tell me how to use this technique in order to figure out the distance to a star. All right, then you also have Cepheid variables. So a Cepheid variable is an unstable star that periodically gets brighter, which means uh, it, it, gets, it gets larger and it gets brighter, and then it gets smaller and it gets dimmer. And so you can see that it makes a graph, and so this time it's going to be a graph of the luminosity versus time, T and you can see that it periodically gets bright, dim, bright, and then dim again. Well, uh, scientists have made up a chart of the luminosity versus the, uh, uh, the amount of time that it takes to make one period on there, and then they notice that it made a, uh, a line. Okay, so that the brightest stars have the largest periods, and then the dimmest stars have the shortest periods. So in order to use this technique, you're going to look at a Cepheid variable, you're going to time with a stopwatch how long does it take to get bright and then dim again. So now you can find the period, so this is the period of the Cepheid variable. We're going to bounce it off the curve. So now we know the brightness of the star. Then we're going to use our photometer to get the apparent brightness of the star. Then we take these two things and we put them together in the photometry equation to find R. So you notice it's, it's essentially the same technique as it was with this one that you had some kind of a chart that you would bounce it off of to get the luminosity and then the F and then you could figure out the distance to the star. Okay, then you have the Tully-Fisher relationship which is uh, going to be measuring how fast is a galaxy rotating and we can do that by using the Doppler effect. We're going to use the light given off by the star and we're going to um, pass it through a diffraction grating so that we're going to see the spectrum of the hydrogen that is being produced by that galaxy. But because one side of the galaxy is rotating, rotating towards us and one side is rotating away from us, then that means that these lines get fatter. So they get thicker. And then it is possible by measuring the thickness of these lines and the Doppler effect, we can figure out the speed at which a, a galaxy is rotating. And it turns out that there's a relationship between the rotational speed of the galaxy and the brightness of the galaxy. So there's yet another graph. So this time you're going to have a graph of the rotational speed versus the brightness. So all that you got to do is uh, you're going to take the light of an unknown galaxy, pass it through a diffraction grating, measure the thickness of the lines, use that to figure out the speed and then bounce it off the curve, 
to get the L. Once you got the L, you can figure out the apparent brightness by using your photometer, and then you plug it into what formula? The photometry equation, and now you can figure out the distance to a galaxy by using this technique. Uh, okay, so let's take a break, and when we come back, we'll, uh, we should be able to finish with this review of uh, measuring things in the universe.